Why, hello there. Do you like camping, even though you own a perfectly good home? Do you like building things that you could easily buy for a few dollars? Do you prefer sleeping in a lean-to, even though you just bought your fourth tent? If you like doing unnecessarily complicated things because they're freaking awesome, then you're gonna love this video. Buckle up, buttercup, because I'm Luke Nichols with the Outdoor Boys, and I'm gonna blow your mind. So do you want to make a drinking mug more manly than punching a kangaroo in the face? Yeah, you do. First thing you're going to need is a cow horn. Luckily, I keep a box of them in my garage. So we're going to hit it with the heat gun. But if you don't have one of these, you can be daring and try a flame. We just hold it till it cools. Now this mug is ready to use as is, but it will drip a little bit from the bottom. So I'm gonna take some food grade epoxy and just coat the bottom to seal it up nicely. <laughs> Quick little hits with the blowtorch make the bubbles go away and makes the epoxy turn clear. There we go, our cow horn mug is done. The epoxy's dried and it's time to test it out on the manliest drink I can imagine. A low cal naturally flavored seltzer water. Mmm, it's watertight and guilt-free. This resin is really useful for a lot of projects. Some of you guys may recognize my cutting board that I use in some of my campfire cooking videos. This is just a piece of aromatic cedar that I coated in this exact same food grade resin. After almost four years of use, it's got a lot of cut marks in it and I'm gonna go ahead and sand this down and then apply another coat of this food grade resin on it. There we go, after the epoxy dried, the cutting board looks absolutely brand new. Customized camping cutting board, super easy. You know what's manlier than shaving your beard with a bearded ax? Turning a $4 hatchet into your very own bushcrafting tool. There's few things more manly and cool than making your own camp ax. Unfortunately, forging one from scratch requires a bit of specialty tools and skills. So a great alternative is to restore your own ax. I found this one on eBay for four bucks. Look how cool that is. First thing I'm gonna do is strip this lacquer and paint off the handle. One hour later. Yeah. Now I just need to get a sheath for it. There's two ways to make a sheath. Either you can sew it, and that's all the tools you need, or you can use rivets, and that's all you need. Both sets of tools only cost a few bucks. Well, check it out. Now that is an ax you'd be proud to go camping with. A couple hours of work and a little bit of elbow grease, this $4 ax has become something to cherish forever. All right, Mimi, what's the manliest bushcraft project we can do? Forge a flint striker. 
So flint striker is that little piece of steel that you smack against flint in order to make fire. We're gonna make one from this piece of a car suspension. This is leaf spring steel. You guys ready? So, all right, right there. Again, again. Now you're gonna hit it right there. You're gonna put it, heat it back up. In order for a flint striker to make a spark, it has to be hardened, high carbon steel. So you take this leaf spring steel and you heat it up until it's a bright orange and you dunk it quickly in water and that'll make it hard enough to make a spark. And you can either do that in a forge, in a campfire, or with a torch. One of the things I hope you're taking away from these videos is that these projects are super easy and don't require a lot of specialty tools. And in that spirit, I'm gonna show you how to make a flint striker without needing a blacksmithing forge, just an angle grinder. We're gonna take another little piece of car spring steel and instead of beating it into shape, we're gonna cut it into shape. Really easy. That looks real good, doesn't it? There we go, only took about an hour and a half and I made a flint striker from an angle grinder and a torch. Well, there we go, two flint strikers. One I made in a forge, one I made without a forge. Once you make a flint striker, you gots to make a tinder box. Let's get some jute or hemp rope, unravel it. All right, that right there is one of the best fire tenders you can get. It's awesome. Now, if you're a little bit lazy and you don't want to unpick this, I'll show you a quick way to do it. Some super fine tinder. This stuff burns like crazy. The way you make fire with a flint striker is you take a little spark and you put it onto a bit of charred cloth. So we need to make some char cloth. So just get yourself a little metal box, then get yourself a piece of linen. I find old dress shirts work really well. I've got a lot of them laying around since I don't practice law anymore. <laughs> now seal that up tight. If you got some hot coals from a campfire, you can put the box right on that and it works really well. You wanna see lots of smoke coming out of the box. That means the cloth is charring. The blowtorch works well too. You see we got a nice black color there, but it's still not quite done in the middle. We'll give it just like a minute extra. Oh yeah, that looks good. When it's perfect, it should break apart really easy, but you don't want it so done that it turns to dust. Put a little char cloth right there. See right there? See that little ember? Put that char cloth in there. Woo! And there we go, fire! Woo! -ha. So we gotta take a little metal tin, put in our char cloth, put in a little piece of flint like this, there's your fire starting kit right there. You know what they say, the best part of camping is the food. And if you wanna get your cholesterol way up there, then you're gonna need your own camping griddle. We're gonna make one. We got a plain piece of 22 gauge weldable steel from the hardware store, no galvanization on it. Next, you're gonna need a ball peen hammer and a hard surface. I've got an anvil, but you can use a piece of concrete, a rock, whatever you got. And you're just gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle and beat it about a half inch into the metal. All right, got a little bit of a, a bow to the metal. Oh. There we go, we've peened the outside of the sheet metal created a little bit of a lip and it's made the metal really strong so it doesn't flex and bend as much. And you could use this same technique to kind of spiral in further, further and further and make yourself like a wok or a steel bowl.
All right, we got this little pin in here. Now we're going to smush it. And get my finger in the process. There's one handle on. Having handles isn't completely necessary and almost half the weight of this griddle is in the handle. So if you want, you can just leave the handles off. All right, I'm gonna burn off this label and give the griddle a non-stick surface. When you heat up the pan, it gets this metallic-y blue finish on it. That's called bluing the metal. And that helps make it a little bit more corrosion resistant. We're gonna go ahead and blue all the metal here. All right, for the next step, I need to take it into my wife's kitchen. You love it when I do bushcraft projects in your kitchen, right? Love it. We're gonna create a non-stick coating on this griddle by seasoning it just like you would cast iron. So I'm gonna season at 375. I'm just gonna coat this pan in a light coating of olive oil. And we're gonna do the whole pan because sometimes food gets on the handles and it also protects it from rust. My griddle's been in the oven for like eight hours and just every 45 minutes or so I've been coating it in olive oil. So let's check it out and see where it's at. That is looking great, but there's a little bit of roughness from where the seasoning went on uneven. So I'm gonna hit it just with a little bit of sandpaper and that should make it as slick as can be. There you go, smooth as silk and ready to cook. If you're gonna be using leaves as toilet paper, might as well drink from an animal skin as well. Oh yeah, we're making a water skin. Got a nice piece of beeswax and I'm gonna mind it. If you don't have a heat gun, you can just melt the beeswax on the stove top and use your wife's hair dryer. That works too. You want the leather to soak up as much beeswax as it can and the beeswax will start to soak through on the outside. You just don't wanna have puddles in the bottom. There we go. There you go, two liter water flask. Not bad, and absolutely no leaks. Now you may not think it, but a spoon is a very useful tool. What did you say to your mother? Right! Now you could make a spoon using a hook knife and a piece of wood, and I've done that, but it's much easier, quicker, and better to make it from cow horn. Right. Put that horn in there for about 15 minutes, see what happens. All right, just bend it up a little bit, get the shape I like, we'll finish polishing it. One thing that's fun about horn is it's, it's not as brittle as you think it is. It's got a lot of bend to it. You can put this in your back pocket and accidentally sit on it and probably be okay. It's really flexible. Cleaning it off with a little bit of olive oil there. Well, there we go. Beautiful cow horn spoon. And if you polish it really good and clean it off, it doesn't taste like cow horn, so that's good. All right. Do you like stabbing things? I know I do. So let's make some custom knives. It's cheap and easy. 
Now, if you want, you can build your own forge and do it from scratch. And I've got a video on how to do that. But if your wife doesn't want you monopolizing the driveway with your blacksmithing forge, there's a solution for that problem too. I've got it in my hand two knife blanks. Yeah, most knife making companies will sell blanks and then you can customize and put your own handle on it, make your own sheath, and you'll have a super awesome, high quality customized knife. So Mora is a really well-known Swedish bushcrafting knife company. And uh, this Mora number no. two knife blank was only $11. Or if you have a little bit more a taste for the exotic, check out this Jelly Roll Damascus Steel Japanese Tonto knife blank. Ooh, this is only 20 bucks. But both of these knives require two very different types of handles and I'm gonna show you how to do both. All right, let's start with this Mora knife. And you can see the tang is flat and it's kind of funky shape. I think this is a piece of coca bola. I found it in my scrap wood pile here and I'll need a 3 16th drill bit for this portion of the tang. And you see it's gonna to need to be a little bit longer than the typical drill bit. That little edge of the piece of tape tells me how deep I wanna go. Now we're going to use a 5 16th drill bit to drill out this portion. All right, so now we got a little bit of a tricky spot. We got this flared neck here. We're going to take this 1 8 inch piece of steel and cut out a little pattern that exactly matches the neck of this tank. There you go, I've made the tip almost an exact replica of this part of the knife. I've got the leftover horn from my horn mug project. We're gonna chop the tip off and use that in our knife handle. Well, about an hour and a half and a couple screw ups later, I finally did it right. Now, if you want, you can burn the end of the wood, shove the blade in all the way, and it'll lock in there really good. You've got a perfectly good knife handle but you'll have these little gaps on the side of the blade. The whole purpose of burning this horn collar is that then you get a nice square fit that's flush up against the blade. It's just aesthetics. Well, I started off with like a 60 grit sandpaper and I slowly worked my way up to a 2000 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna try to milk the last little bit of linseed oil out of this can. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, I thought this was Coca Bola, but I'm not so sure now that I got it polished up. We'll keep putting linseed oil on it till it won't take no more. And if you've done your job right, the knife really shouldn't need hardly any glue. Should be really sturdy and stable all on its own. No wiggle in that at all. The glue's just kind of a formality. There we go, that looks pretty nice. All right, we'll let that leather dry. All right, leather's all dried. It's so got a nice shape to it. Oh, it's raining. I gotta get my stuff put away. linseed oil. We rubbed it in oil, now we're gonna impregnate it with beeswax. Now that right there is a knife I'd take camping. Look at that. Yeah, that is nice. I really like that. Now we're gonna show you how to put a handle on this type of knife, something with a full flat tang. You like that better? Way better. All the dust in there. All right. There we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill through these little holes here and we're gonna put these rivets in. So I've got a 1 8 inch drill bit and a 1 8 inch brass rod. Slowly and carefully. 
pressure, very low pressure. Now flip that around, do that with our other piece here. When you hit these little brass rods, they squish and mushroom at the tops and it forms a fastener. It rivets the handle onto the tank. And that's really what keeps the handle on, not the glue. All right, I ran out of linseed oil, so I'm using olive oil. That African mahogany looks pretty, doesn't it? Really basic, simple handle and sheath. A lot of different ways to do this. Hey nice. Becca, I'm, I made the knife. That's beautiful. Alright guys, now we're going to make a canteen from a water buffalo horn. Now you can use any hollow horn, ram's horn, cow horn, buffalo horn, but you know, it's a water buffalo. It's got the word water in the name. Just get them off eBay or off your local cows and clean them out so they don't smell funky inside. Mm. You want to find out where the hollow spot begins. So get a little piece of baling wire. Push it up there until you find the end, here. Now we need to plug the back end. And we can do it just like we did with the horn mug and try to shape a piece of wood exactly the same, then epoxy it in. But I've got a little shortcut you can use. And this shortcut will also work on the horn mug project if you want it to. A Little bit of cardboard. Oh, we got a lot of resin leaking out. What I should have done is used a little wood glue to glue the cardboard to the bottom of the water buffalo horn. And once it was dry, then add the resin. But you know, live and learn. Resin's all dried. Well, there we go. Let's see if it holds water. Don't see any drips. Yeah, I think it works. Horn canteen, what do you think? Look at me, I'm fashionable and hydrated. Mm. Mm. Doesn't taste like buffalo, that's good. Mm. Another awesome project you could knock out on a Saturday. Nathan, what do you want to make? A horn to strike fear into the heart of my enemies. Not exactly a bushcraft project, but it's manly, right? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Take the sandpaper and you need to sand it till it's all smooth. Okay. Ten seconds later. Nice and smooth. You don't really need to put a layer of epoxy on this, but because I'm giving it to Nathan, I think a little extra protection might help. Now the epoxy's dry, we're gonna put a strap on this thing. Nathan, I got something for you. Oh. There you go. Ooh. Every good young Viking boy needs a war horn. Well, I think that's all the projects I can cram into this strange yet informative video. If you want to see me actually use the equipment I made today out in the bush in a real camping trip, then make sure to click subscribe and stay tuned because we'll be putting that video out shortly. I'll see you next Saturday morning. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button and you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.